play a game with you all this morning. I want you to guess which Indian city this is from, from satellite images. Which one? Oh, that's great. Which is this? That voice went down a bit. It's New Delhi. And which one is this? Chennai. That's very good. It's astonishing that our cities look so diverse and beautiful from outer space and so different. But which city is this? It's any city, right? Or this one. It's your city. It's incredible that all our cities are starting to look alike and they look like they're falling apart. What do Indian cities today look like? We don't have a places for children to play. All our playgrounds have been encroached. And this is the day after Durga Puja immersion in Calcutta. We respect the God, but not the river. Right? This is what passes for affordable housing in India. This is a photograph from Bombay, where you have housing built by people themselves next to railway tracks, and the children have to jump out of the way whenever the train passes. And there is a huge amount of conflict and mobility. We have a widest variety of vehicles of any country on the road at any time. And this causes enormous air pollution. Do you know that Bombay's air pollution, there was a report in the paper today, is four times more than safety levels. And you're all breathing that air. What are you going to do about it? Finally, I don't have to say this, but every government which comes into power anywhere in India immediately does any, undoes any of the good work that the earlier government has done. Right? And we are not at all used to seeing a consistent public policy in urban spaces. Right? But there is a new mood in the air. There is a new dispensation in Delhi. And already there are celebrities going around with brooms all over the countryside. And there is a... I mean, that's not going to change anything, we know that. But, you know, it's a start. Okay? Thank you. It's a start. But there... The change is within you. It is not within the government. It's not some Sarkari's job to clean up the city. It is each one of us. We keep our houses so pristine, but we go and throw the garbage over the compound wall. This has got to stop. Right? You have far more power as a citizen than you do as a consumer. What we are doing now is just consuming the city like we consume cable TV. Right? We just think, hum taxes pay kya? Why bother? Somebody has got to do that. Nobody is going to do that. Taxes are merely the price you pay to live in a city. It does not entitle you to anything else. And as citizens, you have to start understanding that. Right? So how can we do this? There is a big movement in the world now, which is gaining a lot of acceptance, called crowdsourcing, which means to bring the power of an intelligent crowd to bear on problems of our times and make sure that it's more inclusive, better informed, and sort of more equity in the decision making rather than this top-down approach of some bureaucrat or politician deciding, okay, let's put a fly over here or let's do something else there. There has to be a people's driven movement to change our cities, otherwise it's not going to change. Right? You might think this crowdsourcing is a brand new idea, but actually India invented it. Do you know what this picture is? It's a picture of the Sepoy Mutiny, or like the British call it, but we want to call it the First War of Indian Independence in 1857, when people of all faiths came together because of a common problem and fought against a common foe. This is the first really recorded example. We might have as well invented crowdsourcing in India. Right? More recent initiatives like the India Against Corruption and the big rape case in Delhi brought people out of there. You know, all of us like to do clicktivists. We go to a sign online petitions, or even worse, we sit in a chair and look at television and sympathize. That's called slacktivists. So, <laughs> right? so it's got to get people out on the street. You have to get people out on the street. India Against Corruption proved that. In a smaller scale, there is an unusual organization, a good Samaritan organization called the Ugly Indian. Go and see uglyindian.com. They go around Bangalore, groups of anonymous people wearing surgical masks. Wherever they see junk, this is one hour later. Do this in your neighborhood to start with. Start getting involved with your city. Don't just expect anybody else to do it. This brings me to what I have done for my city in Bangalore. It's based on the work of Richard Saul Wurman, who was the founder of TED Talks, the reason we're all here today. He was also an architect, an information architect, and a creative visualizer who said that you cannot change cities unless you can quantify them and everybody can see them and all information about the city is accessible to all. 
If I ask you today and you see a pothole outside your house and I say, who are you going to call? None of you know the phone number. Why is that? That information is publicly available. Start getting to know. So in Bangalore last year, we started this website. You know, we named it nextbangalore.com because in India, there are no best practices. Best practices is what other people have done. In India, you need next practices to quote CK Prahlad. You know? So we started a site called nextbangalore.com. And nextbangalore.com was a crowd visioning site. I said, why should the government tell us the vision? Let us do a vision of our own. And it soon, unfortunately, became a crowd complaining site. Everybody saying garbage not cleared, ditches in my... And from there, we said this is not going to work in this online way because 75% of India still doesn't have broadband. So this sounds like a good idea. But So we then decided to build... Maybe most cities in the world have a city model of their own. You know, and where people can go and see new projects are positioned there. Everybody is allowed to go there. India has five cities in the global top ten. And none of the cities have a city model. Nobody knows what the city looks like. So I said as a private initiative for the, probably the first time in the world, our organization called the MOD Institute, it's Googleable, you can have taken a space in Bangalore and are 3D printing the entire model of Bangalore city by ourselves. Right? As a forum, as an open forum for people to come and comment about the city, look at their areas, etc. So what can you do today when you walk away from here? Start becoming aware of your environment. At least start by knowing what is happening in your local neighborhood and start understanding the Bang Indian city. This is a photograph of Bangalore. There are a lot of beautiful places. Let's make the whole city look like this. Next, find out when your city was founded. Who founded it? Most people don't even know that. And we tend to have a high amount of apathy when it comes to Indian cities. Just figure out. Next, this is a photograph of Sabarmati's riverfront. It was a stinking sewer some time ago, a horrible place, and it has been converted to a place where, you know, there's a lot of talk about smart cities today. And actually, before smart, it's not a technology problem. You need livability. And livability means the city has to be safe for people who are 8 years old and for 8 years old. All of us will be there somewhere in between. If it is safe for 80 to 80, 8 to 80, then the city is a great place. Finally, take responsibility. Last week, we stopped the government from demolishing an old building in Bangalore. It was a huge outcry of 800 people. And they wanted to make it a legislator's club, but we stopped them. And this is possible with a committed group of people from everywhere. And finally, stop complaining. Start fixing. Okay? And join your area resident welfare association or your advanced locality management today. You have to do this. And finally, remember what I said in the beginning. Taxes are merely the price. You pay for a city and you are not allowed to have any other privileges beyond that. So, I would like to end here by saying that we are a country, we, this word DIY is popping up in India all over the place, right? Do it yourself. We don't have a culture. We call, we don't know how to fix a tap. We call a plumber. Actually, we do it for ourselves. We are a selfish country. We are a selfish nation of individuals. We have to learn from do it for yourself to do it together. Thank you.